Hi, Jonathan Head with Nimblehost here, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you some in-depth examples on how to use the simple three-step process to customizing a RapidWeaver theme. Now, in this video, we're going through the process exactly like we do when we create a RapidWeaver theme or when we want to change a RapidWeaver theme. So this video is completely unscripted, which means that we might run into some problems in the way and you'll see us in action as we try to overcome those problems and make the customizations. So with that, let's get started. Now I've created a simple three-page RapidWeaver project and in each page I've listed the three-step process and we'll go through each step in the process on each page so you can see how to customize a RapidWeaver theme. So, on this first page, you'll see it reads sidebar example. Now, with this simple three-step process, the first step is to ask, what do you want to do? And like the page name suggests, we want to reduce the width of the sidebar. So that's our goal. We want to customize the theme to reduce the width of the sidebar here. So now we know exactly what we want to do. Step two in the three-step process is to ask, what is the special name? And this is also known as a selector. So what is the special name or the selector of the exact section you want to change? So we know that we want to change the sidebar's width, but we're not sure what the exact name of the sidebar is. So we're going to use Firebug, mentioned in the tools introduction video, to make this easier to do. Now one of the nice features in RapidWeaver is that you can choose to preview the current page in a browser installed on your Mac. And you can do so by clicking this button here, hovering over Preview, and I'm going to choose Firefox. So we see Firefox open, and we have this sidebar example page listed here. Now, to open Firebug, we click on this button here, and you'll see a window pop up. Now, to make this easier, we want to select the sidebar. So we're going to click on this button here, so that we can select the exact section we want to change. So I've clicked here, and you'll see down here in the window that Firebug has highlighted the code for us, and it's showing us a div container, and it has an ID of sidebar. If you remember our previous video, we went over what an ID is exactly and how to reference it in CSS, and you'll see that in just a few minutes. So, we want to change the width of the sidebar, but we actually see two things here. We see a div with sidebar container, and we also see a div with ID of sidebar. And we want to change the width. So, let's try this ID of sidebar in RapidWeaver to see what happens. So, I'll go back to Rapid Weaver, and if you remember in the CSS introduction in the previous video, we want to add the custom CSS to the page inspector. Under the header tab, we click the CSS button here, and here is where we want to add the CSS. So, if you remember, back in Firefox and Firebug, the sidebar is in a container, a div container, with ID of sidebar. So, in Weaver here, in the custom CSS field, to target an ID, we first enter a pound sign, and then enter in the special name, or the selector, of sidebar. Now. Once we've done that, we enter a pair of curly braces, and we're going to enter 
the rules or the instructions for the changes we want to make to the sidebar here. Now, to make this easier to read, you can put the instructions on different lines, like so. So now, we have the special name or the selector of the exact section we want to change. Back in Firefox, in Firebug, we used this button here so that we could click on the page and find the exact section. And we can see that it's using an ID of sidebar. So we went back into Rapid Weaver, made sure we opened the page inspector under the header and CSS tab, and we entered a hash mark or a pound sign since it's an ID, and then sidebar. Then we have the curly braces, and we're going to enter the customizations or the changes we want to make here. So the next step in the process, step three, is to ask what CSS code can you use to make this change? So we know we want to reduce the width of the sidebar. So what CSS code will allow us to change the width? Well, there's a nice online CSS reference that makes this easy. And it's linked to right here. And I have a page open in Firefox right here. This is the Cultured Code's free CSS online reference. So we want to change the width of the sidebar. And we're not sure how to do that exactly. But there's a good guess, since we want to change the width, that this is something to do with the layout. And it might be positioning, and it might also be the layout itself. We're not quite sure. Oh, but we see here, after clicking layout, that we have a width option. So we'll click on the width, and now we can see that the width can take a value of a length or a percentage. And you, when you hover over, you can see the options available. So let's try this option and see what happens. So going back to Rapid Weaver, we put our code in the page inspector here, and we put in width because that's what the CSS reference here states, width. And we can put in a length or a percentage. We'll try a link first and we're going to go with a standard pixel unit. And as mentioned in our previous video where we explained about CSS, you put in the CSS rule here, in this case width, and then we put a colon, and then the actual value itself. Now I'm going to move the page inspector over so we can actually see the sidebar to see what happens. So let's change this to about 100 pixels px for pixels, and then we close it with a semicolon, but you can actually already see that the width of the sidebar has changed. Now, this is good news because we know the code to change the sidebar works correctly. But you'll also notice that it looks a little strange, and we have some extra space here. And the reason for that is because there is another container. If we go back to our preview site in Firefox, you'll see here that the sidebar is actually inside of a container called sidebar container. So we were changing just the width of the sidebar. So what happens if we change and switch to sidebar container instead? Let's try that. So back in Rapid Weaver, we'll add container, like so, to see what happens. Ah, and we can see that the width has been changed to 100 pixels, and it's now over on the right-hand side, and looks a little bit better, but not quite exactly how we'd like things to be. Let's try increasing the width a little bit, let's say to 150 pixels. And now you can see, well, that's a little bit better. 
So now, having gone through this three-step process, the first thing that we did is ask, what do we want to do? And in this case, we wanted to reduce the width of the sidebar. The next step was, what is the special name or the selector of the exact section we want to change? And we found this by using the Firebug plugin in Firefox, by clicking on the selector button here, and then choosing the sidebar itself, and seeing the code down here on the page that shows an ID of sidebar. And we ended up using the container above, the sidebar container, because that looked better. So our final code in this example was pound sidebar container and again the pound or the hash sign here is for an ID and we're using the special name that we found in Firefox sidebar container. Then we had entered curly braces and we moved to a new line and we entered in the width colon 150 px for pixels and then a semicolon to close. So this finishes our first example the sidebar example of changing, reducing the width of the sidebar. Let's move on to the next example.